okay so we are back with our rpg video tutorials and this is the video that we do the character movement or the npc movement now so far this is what we have we have a character state that for now is just saying peaceful and what i've done between the episode is that is that i went ahead in the player and i have defined this character state so for now we have the character state set to zero if we set the character state to one my character becomes in a feisting state so uh, now what we're going to do is basically introduce the same system that i done in here into our npc so let's get out of play mode and let's take a look at our npc so for now the npc has just the animator so you might have guessed it, we are going to add in a script. I have called my script NPC controller. I'll just drag it, drop it inside my NPC. Now I have a NPC script that is nothing. The very first thing that we want to do is get a reference to our animator. So we're going to do private animator animator. Then we're also going to require that animator. So required component type of animator. Okay, so now we know that we have a animator. And what we're going to do after we get a animator is we obviously want to instantiate it. And to do that, we're going to say animator is equal to get component animator. Okay, now we have our animator. And after we have our animator, we want to just set the values of that animator. So I'm going to define a new method. I'm going to call it void animations. And what we're going to do in here is set the floats. So for the first parameter, we are going to say animator dot set float. And we are going to go and see what floats we have in our animator. So if we take a look, for now we only have a vertical and we have a horizontal. So since this is a MPC, we don't have a input from the keyboard so we are going to define those variables those variables in here so we're going to say private float horizontal and vertical so now you might have guessed it we are just going to pass those values in here so we're going to say set float vertical and the value is going to be obviously vertical and we're going to do the same thing for the horizontal. So set value to horizontal. Okay, now we have our animations. And now let's actually trigger them. So before we do any triggering of the animations, we want to set that character state. And instead of just writing it all over again, what I'll do is I will open up my character. This is my character script, by the way, if you have not caught up with all of the functions that I added. This is the script. I'll just make the font a little bit bigger. So you can just pause the video, I guess. Rewrite everything that you have missed. Here is the animations, the movement, the jump function, the is grounded function, and here is our character state. And we have obviously the GUI. So what I'll do is just, is I'll just grab this character state, copy it, go back to my NPC and just paste it. So we obviously don't have a variable character state in here. And the type of variable that I have introduced in my character in my character controller is a integer value. So I will do the same thing for here. I'll just define it as a public integer character state. I'm also going to hide this from the inspector and now we'll set the float of the character state onto the animator. This is my character animator. We have the state and as we can see it's an integer value because it has no zeros after zero. So I'm going to go back to my NPC and I'll just introduce an integer value called state. So now the state is obviously zero. I'll go back into my animator, introduce that state, and give it the character state. 
So now we have our character state, we have the string get character state, and now we have our functions working properly. Now let's put these animations into update. Let's just call it the first thing that we're going to call is obviously the animations. So let's say animations in here, empty brackets, and now we're done with the animation. So as the first function of our goblin in here, we obviously want him to just walk around. So to do that, we are going to need a series of timers. So we could go and just say roam in here and uh, build a function in here called void roam with empty parameters and now we have a roam function and then we can just build timers and timers and timers for our character to move but there is a much much easier way of doing that and that is using something called nav mesh components so i don't have nav mesh components into this project and i will obviously have to bring it so this is my other project this fps project and what i'll do is i'll just copy this whole entire folder open my assets folder from this rpg game and then i'll just drop it into my components so i'll just create a new folder components and i'll add in this mesh component so you can obviously get the mesh component down in the video description and that is basically very easy to use so now if we go into add component and we do nav mesh agent we are going to have a agent that will allow us to walk into certain directions so this is going to help us a great great deal okay so since our character does not have any knowledge of his surrounding we are going to have to do something about that so after downloading this nav mesh component and adding it into your project you should see a editor script and always into the editor script there will be some tool somewhere in here so in this case we have this window and we have this ai in here so click the navigation and now we have a navigation in here so this is basically the nav mesh component so it's a very straightforward component we're going to go into areas we have jumpable not walkable jump and you can add in any other area so this is the agent we have the humanoid or whatever you spell that and we have this bay function so you don't have to mess with anything in here we're just going to have to click bake this is going to take a little bit of time and after you bake we should see a walkable area and that is exactly what we have in here so now we're done with the navigation we can just put this to the side now in order to use this we're going to need this nav mesh agent so after having that nav mesh agent we're going to do another requirement type of nav mesh agent okay so we're going to notice that we already have a error and the unity does not know the nav mesh agent and that is because we are forced to use a input up here or a import so just say using unity engine.ai now we have a nav mesh agent so we're going to do another private nav mesh agent nav mesh agent okay so now we have this nav mesh agent we're going to do the same old thing we're going to get it as a component and there we have we have a reference to this nav mesh agent so now back into our roam the very first thing that we want to do is ask if we are in the pacific state or the peaceful state so the peaceful state is case zero and now up here what we're going to do is say if the state or the character state is not equal to zero then we simply want to return so the very first function that i'll tell this roam to do is obviously to ask if we if we can actually roam so if we can roam i'm just going to do a very simple timer so i've already explained how timers work and 
up here I'll just define a private float roam timer. So this will change its value. And the way we're going to do that is by saying time.time .time is bigger than roam time. So now this will execute once. And after we execute that, we want that roam timer to be equal to time dot time plus 20 seconds. So now we just added 20 seconds to this timer. And after the time dot time increases for 20 units, we can call this function again. So in here, we are going to have to define some random variables. And in order to use our nav mesh function, we are going to tell it to move to a specific place. And to do that, we're going to say nav mesh agent dot move. Now this move function is the same as our controller. And we already have that as a controller. So we obviously don't just want to move. We want to set a destination. So lucky for us, we have a set destination function. And here is our target. So how do we get a target that is very close to the player? Well, we are going to use a offset in here. And for the offset, I'm just going to say public float maximum roam distance. So here is my here is my distance, obviously. And how do I set this to here? Well, in here, what I'm going to do is define a new vector three. And after defining a new vector three, it obviously takes in three parameters. So what I'll do in here is I will introduce a value type of float. So I'm just going to say float a is equal to random dot range. And the range will be from zero all the way over to two. So this function will generate a 50% chance function. And then I'm going to use this into here. So since we want our X value and our Z value to change, we're going to mess with these two only. So what I'll do in here is I will take the current position of my transform. So I'll say transform dot position dot X plus this maximum road uh, roam distance. So instead of setting the maximum road and distance, I'm just going to use another random function in here. Random dot range from maximum roam distance slash two over to maximum roam distance. Okay, so that is basically what we're going to use. And then for changing this plus value in here, we're going to use this float in here. So to do that, I'm going to define this and I'll, and inside here, I will say if the a is equal to one, then I'm just going to say times one. If not, then minus one. So this will help me define. Actually, I should add this and the end right here and I'll just add in a time. Okay, so here is my function. This will generate a random number from maximum distance slash two over to maximum distance. And it might be a plus or a minus function. So now I'm just going to copy this function and paste it into the Z axis. So it's getting a little bit messy in here. And there it is. So now if I've done everything correctly, we should have this function working properly fine. So I'm just going to hit save and then go into my Unity project. Okay, so let's hit play and let's see if it actually works so far. Well, if we try to move him, he is going to move in this position right here. And the problem is that I've defined this roam distance to zero. So let's define this roam distance to like 30 for now. And let's see if it works. So as we can see, he is going into that direction and hopefully he will stop any time now. Okay, he has stopped. And now if we 
wait for 20 seconds, he should move into a random direction. As we can see in here. Okay, so we can go ahead and chase him. If we can actually catch him. And there is our friendly monster. Okay, so that's about it for this video. I know it's a very I know it's a very simple video, but this is more targeting the beginners. So I hope you learned something from it and uh, we'll continue in the next video.